What can teachers do in this post-election environment full of hate and hyperbole? I have three things to get you started. As for the rest of it, I think we're all going to have to work together. Even if you're watching from outside the U.S., I think we all have to work together to help our students build a better future. First thing, provide safety. This is bigger than any ally sign or safety pin. This is about setting norms for discourse in your classroom that protect students from abuse and attack. All classrooms should strive to be safe and productive environments. It's one of the basic conditions needed to actually learn. Safety might have previously been a silent part of the fabric of your class. It's time to talk about safety and what you will do as the teacher to help protect students. Set up norms that value every student and don't compromise on them. Hear everything and engage in the hard conversations that come up. Teach kids to value and take control of their own safety. Make sure they know what respect they are due. Teach them how to stand up for the rights of others. Get excited about character education. Does your school have a character education program? This isn't about religion or politics or morality. This is about teaching our kids to respect each other and engage in respectful discourse. This is about standing against hate. This is about building a more peaceful and empathic world. In my early years of teaching, I scoffed at the character education programs my school asked me to support. I saw them as just another external obligation handed to English and advisory teachers. Now I see that years ago I declined an invitation to engage my high school students in a meaningful way about character. We do some good work, but I feel I really have left money on the table for years. We could have changed their world together. We didn't. Now, as a makerspace teacher, I see character education at my school, we have the points of pride, as one of the few legitimate excuses I can use to talk to my kids about the kinds of people they choose to be. Thirdly, get hopeful and get working. Despair has no place in the classroom. While the other adults in the world watch the news, see the hate, the protests, the violence, and throw their hands in the air, we're writing lesson plans. We're writing plans about critical reading writing plans about evaluating sources. We're writing plans that lay bare the relationship between propaganda and social media. We're making plans to teach the world to care. We're learning about design thinking so we can empower our kids to fix that mess. Not, not that mess, that's, that's the desert and it's actually beautiful. You may be disillusioned, that's okay. Eat a quart of ice cream, then make a plan. Your action is the only thing that keeps disillusion from turning to despair. At the end of a recent piece he wrote for the Washington Post, Garrison Keillor was speaking of two former teachers. Quote, They've seen it all and are still optimistic. The past year of politics has taught us nothing. Zilch. Zero. Nada. The future is scary. Let the uneducated have their day. I'm going to pay more attention to teachers. Find something you can do and do it. Make a puppet. Record some llamas eating grass. Produce your own propaganda for peace. Tell a joke. Hold a door. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Leave a comment about what you will do and how you'll help your students through this time. Thanks. I'm Sam Patterson for My Paperless Classroom, and we'll talk to you soon.